Doodle Bud here. We got this wicked 3D printed pen that was sent to me by a viewer. I've been chatting back and forth and learn about the pen and seeing how this thing was made. So it's really neat. Let's get to it and check this out. Here we go. Here it is. 3D printed pen. So thanks so much. I'm going to leave the details in the bottom, but to uh, Michael Liu reached out to me and uh, shortly after another viewer sent me a pen <laughs> as a gift which was wicked said he wanted to send me a pen as well whenever i get something no matter what it is if it's uh, obviously pens i talk about fountain pens to this little loop to this scale to anything that i come encounter with all i want to do is look at it and think about how did they make this thing, what went into this, what were the challenges, what they did right, what they did wrong. Very brave of Michael sending me this pen, <laughs> first of all. But let's go through this thing. So this is, it's totally wild. It's like unlike anything else I've I've ever come across. And the reason for that is it's built unlike any other pen you ever get, where you don't need uh, a multi-million dollar fabrication shop or a bench lathe or anything, you do it with this magical thing called a 3D printer. <laughs> it just makes whatever you want it to make, provided you know how to use it and how to make things. If you think, oh, I wanna get a 3D printer and I should make a fountain pen, <laughs> oh, you're in for a massive learning curve on what you gotta do. So let's get into it. This one uh, he sent, he's, he's uh, I'm gonna put a picture on the screen here. He's. So you can see he's made lots of pens in, in different colors, same general type of thing, but different patterns as well. The particular one he sent me here, this model one pattern one. So this is a copper and white. So there, there's like a, a copper uh, PLA that's used uh, for this color. And there's actually multiple different materials used for this. Uh, as you can see, it's clipless, right? So it's a smooth pen and a problem with those pens sometimes they just roll away, right? So. Here's what, here's what he did. This is, I bet you've never seen this before. Interesting. It's a self-correcting. Now, if you, if you, if you give it full beans, it will keep going, right? But, uh, it's an effort to try to help a pen with roll stopping. What, what he did in here, this is a neat idea, man. There's lots of ways to do stuff. Okay. Um, but in here, I, if I, I should have brought a light with me, but anyways, um, if you shine a light from the outside, ah, let me go get the light. All right. I don't have the, the best setup here. So, so if you shine from the outside, you can see, you can see through the pen. Then all of a sudden, what, what is that dark patch going on? He put some lead in there between the layers, but you can see in there how it was made. There's a, a, uh, liner in there. It's a, it's two piece construction. I'm going to talk about that too, but in between put some lead, probably just like some thin lead tape. I used to put that on the bottom of my uh, golf driver in my golfing days to adjust the weight of the club. Um, but something like that, put that in there. So now it's just, that's of course going to want to go to the bottom all the time. So that helps as a, uh, sorry about the focus there. That's, that helps as a roll stop. So that's a very unique feature. I have not seen that before. Apparently this, he uh, gave me a little write up I'll see if I can maybe even get a copy of the write-up for the uh, for the comment, not the comment, the description section below. But uh, you know, run through it really quick. Model one, pattern one. So uh, platypus pens. There's going to be a little email you can get in touch with. He talks about ink and cleaning. You know, sort of basic stuff for folks. Uh, I got rid of all that and went. Uh, I read it, read it quickly. But of course, technical details. That's the thing that gets me going. Uh, the nib, so it's a Yovo nib, it's a German nib, number five, same as you have in, say, like a Faber-Castell. The construction, it's seven different 3D printed parts, different plastics specifically selected for the task at hand. Uh, he talks about the roll stop as a best effort uh, to kind of keep the overall design of the pen. Talks about the different PLAs he's using, so he really got into all the detail of how he did this pen. Also, he had to create his own custom uh, software to generate the G-code he needed to drive the machine to do it the way he wanted, which was great. And uh, the construction, how you had to do it as well. So I, would, I was reading through this, and the coolest thing with this, with this whole deal was, you know, you get something like this, and uh, you go, how was that made? And he tells you, you know, sort of how it was made. And you go, well, wait a second. Does that mean this is how you made it? And I get to ask that question, and he answers back and goes, yes, that's how I made it. And we get to bounce things back and forth. So um for me that's the kind of my favorite part is figuring out how something was made i got to talk to him interact with him directly to ask some questions so that uh, was really great 
So right away, when you go to 3D print a pen, there's a there's some challenges you got to deal with right away, and that's just how the pen is made. So you'll make a, a 3D model in the software, and then it gets what they call sliced. So unlike, say, putting, let's just say this, this barrel is made on a lathe or something like that, other than putting this part into your lathe, your machine, and then it's just cut, the contour is cut, no, 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 that's not how a 3D printer works. It, this would get cut into, let's say, I don't know, let's say a thousand small slices, maybe a, a you know, fraction of an inch, right? A few thousandths of an inch thick. And it gets, it prints that layer, then the next layer goes on top, next layer goes on top, next layer goes on top. So this would look very different if it was made that way. So right away, you got to deal with some stuff. Now you can either try to fight it. You know, that's how a 3D printer works. And that means there's going to be some details that you can and can't do and things that will show up. So you can either fight it and you're going to lose that fight because it's, it's just inherent in the technology. Or you can understand it and then sort of use it to your advantage. It's kind of like the judo, right? Use your opponent's weight to your advantage. If you want a nice smooth finish on the outside, you're just, you're not going to get that with a 3D printed pen without a lot of finishing, right? So we can see here, if we zoom in, there's only uh, like this part here, this little section grip is the only one that's printed normally where it's spliced into a bunch of little layers. Let's see if we can get this here. Okay, well, I'll zoom in a little bit more. I got a new phone, so I'm still working on this thing. Okay, so you can see if we can get you some. <laughs> the focus sucks even more than the other phone I had. Uh, so you can see those little, tiny, super thin layers. It's, it's not perfectly smooth. You can see it's got that texture. You can hear it. Okay, so that's because this little part, the, the section was cut into sections, into layers. And then each one is made on subsequently on top of it. So it's not going to line up and be totally perfect, right? So if you want to make the whole pen like that, you're going to have to deal with that. And maybe there's some post work you do, whether it's sanding or, or whatever it is you got to do. But instead of fighting that, you can sort of, again, use it to your advantage and do some really cool stuff and design properly to kind of hide that. So what we got here, this is a very strange type of weave pattern like it kind of reminds me of uh, patio furniture your what is it the the wicker type patio furniture how it's it's uh, kind of woven into each other it gives a really cool texture but what that sort of does is it also hides the layers as well because there's so much texture going on but to get it this way he had to print it very different so again this <laughs> new phone is driving me nuts um you could see that the it, it doesn't go straight around. It's not a hoop. It's not a circle. There's a pitch to it. See how there's a slight angle to those, let's just call them threads, is almost how it works. That pattern isn't perpendicular to this surface. It's at a slight angle because what he had to do, he had to print it in a special mode. He had to actually write uh, software to generate the G-code the way he wants, which is pretty, pretty ambitious. So it actually does is this is all one tool path the whole way up so it's the difference between slicing a potato or you go to the fair you get one of those hurricane potatoes the tornado potatoes whatever they're called and it's on the stick right and they spread it out it's all one cut but it's spread out the whole way right it's, it's a helix right it's a helical tool path so it just kept on printing the whole way up whole way up and then he said finally at the end he had to do some sort of trippy kind of tool paths um, we can see that there, both ends the, on the cap and, and the body here have this weird little, yeah, it's like a swirl to it. It reminds me of like a pinwheel kind of thing. And this is actually afterwards, like, so this is, this is not uh, sanded or retouched at all, this main part, just the end finials here. Again, if this camera could focus, um, these are sanded and polished a bit, so it's sort of bring out that feature. So again super unique all comes together so there's uh, seven different parts that make this up um, when he printed this as well it's one thing to do that tool path but it's such a thin wall so um the other 3d pens i've seen are, are pretty big right like say something like a rango or i got this other giant uh <laughs> kiwi pens right like they're big because you need to build structure with the 3d printer but this is mega thin, like this on its own, you could just crush it. So he had to make a two part construction. So he prints this outer um, texture here, the main part of the body. 
it's vase mode in that one singular helical tool path that he does. And then there is a inner tube that goes in there and epoxy together. So it actually gives it really good rigidity, really good strength as well. So really clever there. Also, when it comes to threads, you know, one of my most hated things, yes, I'm gonna pick on this one, okay? But it's, 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 it's there, is uh, and not just this pen, many pens. People get so sensitive when I beat up cheap pens. Um, you got metal threads on plastic. You can do it the right way and not have it gnaw on it. But whether it's metal on plastic or even just different hardnesses of plastic, okay, they can, if they're the same material and they're both kind of soft, they can gnaw up a little bit. You want one to be a little bit harder. So what's great too is the threads aren't 100% accurate coming out of a 3D printer versus cutting one on a lathe or on a mill or you, you got a, a tap or something like that. So the harder one, the harder material is going to kind of shape and mold the softer thread, whether it's the male or female side, so they actually mate perfectly. So when I, when I actually got first got the pen, the threads were a little bit tight. I'm like, that's not too bad for 3D printing. But now that I've used it more, um, whoop, don't want to cross thread. <laughs> now that I used it more, um, the threads have actually gotten better over time. Now I am curious over time, does it start to deplete and eventually get bad? I don't know. I've, I've had this for a short period, but I've been using it a bunch. I even took it to Home Depot with me. I had to pick up some stuff, so I was making my list, checking it twice, all that good stuff. So that's really neat as well. Um, there, uh, see? Smart. And you had to make this part as well. Then even how the threads are cut, when you're going to different uh, other other threads, obviously it threads into another one, you have to think about wall thickness and all these other things too. So even the layering, he had to kind of stagger the layers. You can see it here, but the, the, uh, the thread, a thread is typically, you know, like a point goes like this equal on both sides. I noticed on these ones here, one side is a little more vertical and then the other side coming off of it is, you know, it's not as a severe of angle. So that was really interesting. All these little details that show up when you look at the pen as well. Um, there are a few grooves. Oh, we can, if we can, man, get some focus going. There we go. So there's a groove here, one up there as well. So there's four of them. And uh, I'm not 100% sure that that's just to help so you don't over constrict. So when you mate the parts together, when they fit into each other, maybe there's a channel there for some epoxy or just to help with deformity, things like that. But uh, yeah, just a little feature I've noticed on there as well. I mean, I even talked about how it writes. It writes really well. <laughs> it writes great. I, I enjoy how it writes. And it's got a number five Yovo, which is the same nib as, you know, one of my favorite pens, the, uh, the Faber Castell. Emotion here in the stealth black. This was in my uh, top three pens for Apple Boom pens. And actually, you know, since we have them out, let's just, it's not a fair comparison because they're made exceptionally different, but they got the same nib and everything else too. So no matter what body you put it into, they both write really well. So this pen feels just as good as one of my top three pens. Now they're made very different tolerances, uh, precision, all that. So Again, this pen is made with completely different technology than this pen here. But uh, as soon as I wrote with it, it was a Yovo 5, I, and I wrote with this guy right after, and I'm, they felt the same. So the writing experience is good, the wetness is good, feedback, all that stuff. You're getting a very good quality nib on here too. Uh, it posts, you know, and if you like a pen with texture and that makes sounds, well, let's... got lots of sounds to it so <laughs> it's yeah it's it's unlike anything else because we always want our pens to be you know just everything smooth and perfect and no dips no misalignments all the the stripes are perfectly parallel perfectly spaced there's no burrs no texture um whoop, bump there there like everything is completely uniform we're still wiggling Everything's uniform. Everything's just so. Well, yeah, you have that luxury when you have that equipment. When you got a 3D printer, you're you're not going to be able to get that that level. So you gotta work with what you got, and it's a pretty impressive little pen. Like I couldn't imagine how long this must have taken. Even when I um, started looking at it more, I started to ask him about the threads, and he ended up writing his own code for those threads you can download ones for a certain uh you know diameter and a certain pitch and they're there 
but uh, a lot of times I had to get touched up and cleaned up afterwards and he fiddled with the software over and over and over and now he's got his own code that he does for all the threads too. So just the trial and error alone on getting a reasonable thread. Uh, each color is going to behave a little different when you print it. Uh, all the tool paths you've got to do. He had to make his own software again, like I said, to generate the tool paths for the machine. So there's a lot behind it. I'll go do a quick writing sample for you now, just so you can see one for the folks that got to see that. But for me, this was uh, more about just how this thing is built, the story behind it, all the challenges you got to deal with anytime you make any product. When you sit down and look at it, you start to, well, at least this is all I do. I, I start to build it in my head. How would I do this? And what are some challenges that I would run into? And they probably ran into it as well. And what did they do to overcome that? Was there a better way? Or, oh, that's a really smart way. I never even thought of that, right? So there's just so much you can learn. Everything's got a story. So I guess sort of like a CSI person wants to find out who killed who. Uh, the engineer in me just looks at this and go, how is this made and what was done and what were they thinking or what were they thinking? So, so here we got our 3D printed pen. But it's 3D printed pen. This was, uh, was it model one, pattern one? Okay. And of course, it's got a Yovo number five and fine wetness it's it's really good like it's just these nibs are all usually tuned very very well uh can it mango chutney of course it can yeah it's just it's really good performing pen as far as writing experience um but then you got to decide is is a pen in this kind of finish in this sort of design is this for you or not you got to think about that so when you're trying to compare it against other pens, it's really hard to do it because construction is going to be so different. Even this Amazon pen that, you know, the thread squeak, I was complaining about that. It's still, you'll get a better quality thread on this, this one than you can with a 3D printer and same, everything will be perfect and smooth. You can control all of that so precisely. So trying to compare it against another pen is very hard. Um, so it's it's so unique it's on its own category so you have to open your mind up when you come across this and go oh well these aren't uh, as nice as this or this is different than that well it's yes it's going to be very very different from any other pen you've come across for size we have a few other pens to compare against this is the amazon basics this is the jinhao 51a and here's a visconti rembrandt so right in the ballpark as far as weight it is uh 18 grams and about four of that is in the cap. So yeah, very, very similar to like, let's say the Jinhao 51A here or like a Parker 51 obviously as well. So if you like these type of sizes of pens, this is right in there. But what I like about this one is, well, it is different. It stands out, it's completely shot in the dark, but with this one, I can see the story. I, I you know, I'm building it in my mind and there's just a lot of, I guess, character to the pen because there's a lot that went into making a pen with this type of technology with a 3d printer versus your standard methods that all other pens are made from so i actually like it you know the uh the writing experience is is great it's got good guts so it's that's the big biggest thing that you know he especially did right there is he started with you know for me one of the best out of the box steel nibs are the ones that you find on a faber castell so he's using the same ones on there too so maybe he's got the same feeling as me um, but the good decision. So you're, you're starting off on a right foot and then, and now it's just a question of your packaging. And of course, you know, this, this or main may not be for you. Some of the other colors look really cool too. So maybe it's the color you don't like, but it is very interesting. This is so different, especially from some of the other 3d ones I've, I've kind of caught a glimpse of. And so there's a lot of thought that went into this pen and there's a story that goes behind it. And for me, that kind of, that's what I like about these pens the most, especially that's why I did the, the ode there or whatever to the Lamy 2000. Cause the more I looked at it, the more I kind of put the story together and what was going on. And so for me, that's really fun to do with a pen, especially when you get one that's so different, that's such an outlier. Um, that's the stuff that interests me a lot. So thank you, Michael, for sending this on and sharing your, uh, cool creation with us. I could, 
just imagine the late nights and the uh, F-bombs you've dropped uh, while <laughs> making these pens. So I appreciate you sending it on. And yeah, good work, buddy. Final flyby glam shot close up of the pen. It's got that cool shininess to it too. It's not a flat uh, plastic. So really cool. Thanks for sending the pen, Michael. I'm going to put as much information I can in the description along with his email because he is going to be selling these. So connect with him on that. I'm not involved with that. So uh, connect directly with Michael. Um, I really appreciated you sending this on and, and uh, putting your work out for the world to see and, and critique as well. Speaking of critique, uh, fellow Canadian Douglas Rathbun is going to be getting one of these in the mail anytime as well. So he'll be doing a review. So that'll be a very different take, different perspective. We are very different folks. So it's good to have different uh, looks at this pen from different angles and thoughts and opinions and perspectives. So keep your eye out for that one. And also on my channel too, don't forget. So give me a subscribe and some likes and all that kind of good stuff. And we will catch you next time.